why don't we just lift our hands to the Most High God and bless the King of Kings, bless the Lord of Lords, bless the Ancient of Days, give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration, bless his name, is worthy to be praised, is worthy to be adored. There's no one like him. He's the Almighty God. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. The highest, the greatest, the oldest, the wisest. the richest, the beginning of all beginnings, the end of all endings, the unchangeable changer, the Holy One of Israel, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the soon coming king, the one who opens and no man can shut, the one who shuts and no man can open, the one who decreed, let there be light and there was light. Praise him, adore him, worship him. Let him hear your voice. Praise the King of Kings. Thank you, Lord. Lord of all, thank you. King of glory, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. Your mercy. Endure forever and ever. Oh, praise His holy name. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, Amen. and Lord of Lords. There I am that I am. The one who lives forever. Only the one you kill can die. The one you make alive will remain alive. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you in advance for today. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, today, like never before, please visit your children. And let every yoke be destroyed today. By the time this day is over, my Father and my God, let everybody, without any prompting, shout hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Well, shake hands with two or three people and said, good evening, welcome to Double Blessing. And then you may please be seated. Well, as at 6 p.m. today, the number of children born during this Congress had increased to 11. Four boys and seven girls. Well, let the girl shout, praise the Lord. And let the boy shout, hallelujah. Don't worry, boys, you, you will soon catch up. After all, today we have three boys and three girls, so by tomorrow, I'm sure the boys will have taken over. If you believe that, say amen, boys. <laughs> well, you know very well that tomorrow is the big night. Um, my only advice is that you come early because there will be no empty seats tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll be discussing the double portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But um, for tonight, I'll be talking very briefly on from curses to blessings. My text is Psalm 40, from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 40, 1 to 3. And uh, it's always good to appreciate what is good. I think the choir was very, very good tonight. So let's encourage them by giving a round of applause to the Almighty God. And I want to thank God for those who have spoken before me our beloved president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Bishop Waleuke. It's only in the, among the Pentecostals that you find a pastor claim to be the father of a bishop. <laughs> but the bishop happens to be my son. <laughs> I've known him for donkey years. He was my student at the University of Lagos. Way, way back in the 1970s. So I've known him for a long time. You're looking at a true man of God, a true child of the living God. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause. And I want to thank God also for my daughter who gave the second talk. Uh, that was wonderful. 
beauty. I've known her for more than four decades. Looking for a woman of God, a terror to demons. That's the one there. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause. <laughs> Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. God is going to hear the cry of somebody today. And then what did he do? He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. I believe that passage is written for me. If it's written for you, let God hear you shout hallelujah. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. You know, there is something called fearful miracles. Somebody is going home tonight with fearful miracles. On earth, there are two major powerful forces. One is called curses. The other is called blessings. Very powerful two forces. You see, in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 28, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, when God created man, he told him, you are to have dominion. He told man, have dominion. But then, a close examination of the situation on earth is that there are many things beyond the control of the man that was asked to have dominion. He said it should be fruitful, it should multiply, etc., etc. But a man can plant in the best of soils and still have no harvest. Why? Because he has no control over rain. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, Deuteronomy 28, verse 12, the Bible says God can give someone rain in a season. That's someone who is blessed. But in the same Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 24, Deuteronomy 28, verse 24, the same God says, the rain for that particular person will be powder and dust. That's the one who is cursed. And Amos chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8, Amos 4, from verse 7 to 8, tells us that God can rain on one part of a city and leave the other part dry. When we talk about having dominion, there are certain parameters beyond the reach or control 
of a man. Apart from no control over rain, there is the issue of competition. In John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, the Bible tells us the story of multitude of sick people by the pool of Bethesda that an angel will come and stir once a year and say the first fellow to get in will be healed. The Bible tells us there was a man who had been there for 38 years. He believed. He had faith that if he can only just get in as soon as the angel has stirred the water, that he will be healed. But he said, I have tried 38 times and failed 38 times because each time I was coming, somebody got in before me. Competition. Even among children of the same mother, there could be competition. Uh, if you read Genesis 25, from verse 21 to 28, Genesis 25, from verse 21 to 26, two boys, twins, in the same womb, were already quarreling before they were born. <laughs> the day they were born, the first one came out first, the second one grabbed the leg. I don't know what he was trying to say. Maybe he's saying to him, where are you going? So even your own brother, son of the same mother, can be a competitor saying to you, you aren't going to make it. Not to talk, of course, of <laughs> several enemies, known and unknown, headed by their big ogre, the devil. Because First Peter chapter five verse eight, First Peter five verse eight says, "Your enemy, like a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour." Now the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 Genesis 3 verse 19 when God was pronouncing a curse on Adam he said from now on you will sweat before you eat. The implication of that thinking like a mathematician is that if somebody has to sweat before he could eat, if the situations were reversed, somebody can succeed without sweating. If the one who is cursed had to sweat, you know what that means? He will walk like an elephant and eat like an ant. Then it means if the other fellow is blessed, <laughs> he will walk like a rat and eat like an elephant. Today we want to discuss these two forces very briefly. Because your life as it is today, is being controlled by either of these two forces. I mean, if you consider, for example, the case of Isaac. Isaac was a blessed fellow. You discover that the Bible tells us that 
in a time when there was famine in the land, Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold in one year. But then we'll talk more about that later. When you want to know why is someone succeeding and another one failing, you need to find out is he blessed or is he cursed? And the reason we've gathered tonight is, is that in the name that's above every other name, even if you are cursed, that curse is going to be changed to blessings. <laughs> what exactly do we mean by a blessing? If you read Genesis 27, from verse 22 to 27, Genesis 27, from verse 22 to 27, when Isaac was blessing Jacob, pay attention to what he said. He said, the dew of heaven will cooperate with you. He said, the earth will cooperate with you by bringing you its fatness. He said, the people on earth whether they like it or not, will cooperate with you. He said, your brethren, your mother's children, they will cooperate with you. He said, even your enemies, those who dare to curse you, he said they will be taken care of. Yeah. What is a blessing? In very single langu simple language, a blessing is a summon to all forces in heaven, on earth, even underneath the earth must join together to see that the one who is blessed will succeed. That's the meaning of a blessing. A summon, a decree to all forces, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, to support you, to make sure you succeed. That's why the greatest prayer anybody can pray for you is to say, God bless you. And I want to say that one for free. God bless you. That's why when I'm going about at night praying, Minding my own business, praying for Nigeria, praying for the rest of the world, praying for our churches in all over oh, more than 190 nations of the world. And somebody will see me and say, Daddy, pray for me. And I will turn to them and say, God bless you. And they say, ah, pray for me. Ah. I've already prayed the best prayer I can ever pray for you. By saying, God bless you, I'm saying, let all the forces in heaven, all the forces on earth, all the forces underneath the air, cooperate with you so that you will succeed. So I'm saying to somebody right now, God bless you. Yeah. 
Now, when you compare that to Genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, when God was cursing Adam, see what he said. He said, the ground will walk against you. He said, instead of the ground producing good things, it will produce thorns and tissues. He said, until you sweat heavily, no food. And he said, you will depreciate so steadily until you finally die. That's a curse. The curse is saying, let all the forces in heaven, on earth, underneath the earth, walk against somebody so that he will never make it. Ah, I pray for someone tonight. Every curse upon your life shall be destroyed. So when you want to read, when you are looking for a copy or a sample of full-blown blessing, read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 13. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 13. It tells you what will happen when you are blessed. It says your body will cooperate. He says the ground will cooperate. He says your enemies will be taken care of. He said rain will cooperate. He said your competitors will be handled. Because that's why he said, oh, you're going to be head, you won't be tail. He said you'll be, ball, you'll be lending to a nation, you won't borrow. He said, enemies that come against you one way, we flee seven ways. He said, the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, even your animals will be blessed. And if you want to read what full-blown curses can be, read the same Deuteronomy 28. Pick it from verse 15 and read it to the end. It's a terrible kind of something to read, but if you want to read through the Bible, like some of us by this grace have done more than once, you can't jump that. Because he says, when somebody's cursed, the body won't cooperate. All manners of sicknesses and diseases will just be jumping up and down in the body. He said the fellow would depreciate he rapidly. He said the heaven will be brass. The rain will be powder. And the enemy will be let loose on rampage. Consider Jericho. Joshua chapter 6. Let me, let me take it first of all from 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22. They said to Elisha, the elders of Jericho, they said, hey, our, our sister is just looking beautiful. But even the water is bad. There is barrenness. There is death. Why? Because Jericho was cursed in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Joshua 6, verse 26. Joshua cursed Jericho. And one thing you know about curses is that it flows like a river. Once it starts on somebody, the children and children, children are in trouble. Any curse coming upon you from your forefathers, God will destroy today. Yeah. 
On the other hand, consider Isaac that I mentioned earlier on in Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to 16. Genesis 26 from verse 1 to 16. In the midst of a famine, when everything was dry, Isaac prospered so mightily while everybody else was crying that things were hurt. There was a man who prospered so mightily that the king of the nation came to him and said, Sir, go away from us because we have become mightier than us. One fellow became mightier than a nation. I know by considering the circumstances, not only in Nigeria, but practically almost all over the world, by human calculations, the coming year is supposed to be a very tough year. But do you know one thing? There is somebody listening to me now. The coming year is when they are going to prosper the most. Why? Because they will be blessed. When you are blessed, while others may be suffering, you'll be blossoming. So the cursed person is like a man driving in the wrong direction and going at high speed. He's driving towards destruction. And all forces are saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Pushing him further and further. I mean, take Gehazi, for example. You know the story of Gehazi? Second King chapter 5, from verse 20 to 27. Second Kings 5, 20 to 27. He lied to his master, cheated, and the master turned and pronounced the cause on him. He said, the leprosy of Naaman will cleave on him and on his seed forever. And the Bible says immediately he was covered in leprosy. And if you know anything about leprosy, <laughs> it destroys the body steadily, rapidly. Fingers begin to drop off. Toes will soon be gone. No trees gone. Every day, the leper goes steadily towards the grave. Whereas a blessed man will be going higher day by day as all the forces in heaven on earth and underneath the earth continue to support him, pushing him higher and higher. For example, Jacob. Genesis chapter 30, from verse 27 to 43. Genesis 30, 27 to 43. The Bible tells us that he just kept on increasing, increasing, increasing until he became exceedingly great. Exceedingly great. From tonight onward, 
in the name that's above every other name. That will be your testimony. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want to talk long. So if you think I'm introducing you, you'll be surprised I'm about to stop. To move from being cursed to being blessed requires tremendous amount of anointing. to transform a life against whom all evil, all forces in heaven or not underneath the earth. A man that all forces are working against to transform him to someone that all the forces now are helping. It takes a tremendous amount of anointing. Because to bring somebody who is already in a pit marry horrible pit to pick him from there and put him on the mountain top you have to do it in steps pick him up from the hole put him on level ground and then pick him from the level ground and begin to lift him up the fellow who is driving madly in the wrong direction. For you to get him to now begin to drive in the right direction at speed, first you have to stop that rapid downward train, turn the car around, bring him to level zero where he started uh, driving in the wrong direction. And then I will say, all right, oh, go in this direction and support you. That's where the text for tonight came from. Someone's discovered all of a sudden, where am I? And he saw, oh, I am in a horrible pit. I'm surrounded by Mary Clay. The more I try to get out, the deeper I sink. And that fellow cried to God. And God heard him and brought him out on where he can stand firm. And then, as he began now to lift him higher, he began to sing a new song. Somebody will sing a new song here tonight. I'll just tell you maybe just one story. And then we'll, we'll round up and then go ahead and pray and anoint you so that the anointing will destroy whatever causes might be in your life. Some of you will remember the story of a man, very wealthy man. who had a quarrel with his wife. And the wife happens to have <laughs> a little connection with the devil. 
So the wife pronounced a curse on him and told him, by the time I finish with you, you'll be trekking in Lagos. And the husband laughed. I thought it was a joke. Because at the time the wife was saying that, I think the man had about 14 cars. How can a man with 14 cars, good business, fat uh, bank account, become somebody who will trek? But the cars began to walk. And one by one, one by one, one by one, the cars were sold. Money dried up until there remained only one car, one old car. And 50 cobble in the pocket of this man. At that time, 50 cobble was big money. <laughs> it would probably be about 500 naira or something today. Um, we've been witnessing to him. It's because there was plenty of money. He doesn't feel he needed Jesus. All of a sudden, God, in his infinite mercy, opened his inner eyes. And he said to him, sir, I have 50 copper left. And I'm hungry. If I eat with this 50 cobble, I will have money to buy petrol for my car. Then I will trek, like my wife prophesied. If I use the money to buy petrol, what will I eat? That's when he drove to Ibutemeta, the headquarters of the church, and gave his life to Jesus Christ. The day he was sharing his testimony, he was dedicating two big houses, new, in the same Lagos. The tide turned. And the tide is going to turn for somebody today. You know, after tonight, by the time the Almighty God finishes with you, as we are entering the new year, you won't even remember that you had suffered before. But it takes a massive dose of anointing to change curses to blessings. To change a victim to a victor. Take Judges chapter 15 from verse 11 to 16. Judges 15, 11 to 16. It's the story of Samson. I'm sure you know the story. The enemies within bound him and handed him over to the enemies without. And some of you, you have a rough idea of what that means. That relatives from your own family handed you over to the enemies in your husband's house. And the situation become complicated. Enemies within handed Samson over to the enemies without. And the enemies without were already rejoicing. They thought they have got this one now. But the Bible tells me that the Spirit of God came down on him, not gently, massively. The Spirit of God came down on him mightily. Massive dose of anointing. And the ropes were broken. 
and the enemies, those of them that were not fast enough to run, a thousand lost their lives. Tonight, God is going to anoint you. It will be a double portion kind of anointing. To prepare you in readiness for tomorrow. Um, I've told you that the purpose of this particular Congress is to change you from receiving to becoming. Mm -hmm. You will receive freedom tonight. There will be a, a new turnaround for you tonight. And then by the time God has done what he wants to do tomorrow, you will become a blessing to others. Now before I get out of here for a while, I want to give you an illustration of how God can change curses to blessings by telling you the story of a man in the Bible. His name is known as Levi. In Genesis chapter 49 from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 49 from verse 1 to 7, when his father was about to die, he called all his children together and he blessed some and cursed some, depending on what they had done in the past. Among the ones that he cursed was this fellow called Levi, because they've done something very horrible. What he said is that they won't amount to anything. They will be scattered in Israel. But then by the time we go to Numbers chapter 3 from verse 11 to 13, Numbers chapter 3 from verse 11 to 13, all of a sudden we, we read that God commanded Moses and said to him, Bring Levi near. The father says they are to be scattered. God said, no, 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 no. Bring them close to me. I cancel the curse of his father. Bring him close to me because I want him to become my firstborn. <laughs> you know what happened? that led to that dramatic transformation. Oh, something had happened in Exodus chapter 32. Exodus 32. You can read it from the beginning to the end, but if you want, you can just pick it from verse 25 to 28. Moses had gone to be in the presence of God to receive the Ten Commandments. While he was away, the people decided to worship an idol. They, they, they made an idol for themselves. By the time Moses returned, he saw the people dancing naked before a golden idol. Ah, what is this? But Moses knew. <laughs> that he could not face the children of Israel alone. So he stood by the gate and cried out, whoever is on the Lord's side, let him come to me. The Bible says, all the children of Levi gather together to Moses. God looked down from heaven and saw the children of Levi 
crossing over to Moses, saying, we are on the Lord's side. And God said, all right. If you are on my side, then I'm on your side. You know, the Bible says, I love those who love me. That's God speaking. If you say you are my side, I will be on your side. And if God is for us, who can be against us? If God says, I am on your side, every curse will come to an end. And blessing will take its place. So, I'm not begging you tonight to give your life to Jesus if you haven't done so. The choice is yours. Are you tired of curses? Would you rather move from curses to blessings? Are you tired of walking like an elephant and eating like an ant? Are you tired of all forces in heaven, on earth, everywhere, walking against you? And you want a situation where whatever you touch now will begin to prosper? Because God is now on your side. The choice is yours. So if you are here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, Jesus is crying now, who is on my side? Let him or her come unto me. So I'm going to count from one to ten. Those of you who will want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight, those of you who want to say, I don't want to have anything more with the devil, I don't want to have anything more to do with curses and all evil forces waging war against me, run forward. Before I say ten, come and stand before me here. And then we will pray for your salvation and we will continue with the rest of the program. So I'm counting now. One. Two. Now I know some of you are coming from afar, so you have to move a bit fast. Three. Four. Five. It is only Christ that can redeem you from curses. Come to him. Six. Seven. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Eight. Nine. Now, if you're on the way, just keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. And those of us who are already in the front, cry to the Almighty God, tell him, 
please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. Let your blood wash away all my sins. And receive me into the family of God. And I will have nothing more to do with sin, nothing more to do with the devil, and I will do your will. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. And please, the rest of us, can we intercede for these people? Let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them. That the Almighty God who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's, let's pray for them. And cancel us. Please come very quickly to come and attend to these people. Go ahead, cry to God, ask him to be merciful unto you, ask him to save your soul, ask him to move you from the camp of the devil to the camp of the living God. Promise him from now on, he will be your Lord, he will be your savior, and you will serve him wholeheartedly for the rest of your life. Now hurry up, I can see, see one or two. See, just come in. Hurry up quickly. Come now. This is your day of salvation. Your day of deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I bless your holy name for the people who have responded to the altar call. Father, please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, that tonight you will receive these people. You will forgive them. You please save their souls and let your blood wash them clean. And I pray, Lord, that they will now become members of the family of God. That they will never think of going back into the world. For the rest of their lives, Father, let them serve you. And I pray that every curse upon them will be destroyed tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Can you hear me? Those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Very good. I'm rejoicing with you. The counselors will give you a card. I want you to fill it very quickly. I promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer request. And as soon as we finish filling the card, you can go back to your seat. Um, in the meantime, I think we'll have some music while we wait for our new brothers and sisters to finish their card.
Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Just as we are waiting for our brothers and sisters, oh, the Lord are missing today, want to have a special presentation by someone that is very, also very special to our daddy in the Lord at this very moment. By the special grace of God we have here present with us by name, Dr. William Wilson. Dr. William Wilson, if I have to take a fraction of his profile, is a leading voice in the spirit empowered movement, one of the fastest growing movements in history. Dr. Wilson is the fourth president of Oral Roberts University. He began his tenure in June of 2013 and has led the university through consecutive years of historic growth. By the special grace of God, Wilson and his wife, Lisa, reside in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right now. They have two children and seven grandchildren. Beloved of the Lord, for this special presentation, please, this is my joy and pleasure to bring to the microphone Dr. Williams Wilson. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Good evening, and the Lord bless you, indeed. What a great message tonight from Daddy G.O. and our great pastor at Aboye. Would we give God praise again for this word this evening? Congratulations to all of those who have given their life to Jesus tonight. And I've come to bring you greetings from Pentecostals around the world. I serve as the chair of the Pentecostal World Fellowship. We just completed our 26th Pentecostal World Conference in Korea. And we bless you here in Nigeria tonight. I also bring you greetings from the entire spirit empowered community around the world and Empowered 21. Pastor Adeboye serves on our global council and we're preparing for a very large gathering in Amsterdam this coming June to talk about reaching every person on earth for Jesus Christ. I'm thrilled with the theme of this Holy Ghost Congress, a double portion. Elisha needed more than Elijah because the work was not yet completed. Our work is not yet finished. We need more than those who have gone before us. Would you say amen? I also serve, of course, as the president of Oral Roberts University. I want to say at ORU, we love Nigeria. We have 126 nations presently attending ORU, over 5,000 students. And the number one nation among all of those 126, as far as numbers of students, is Nigeria. So we love Nigeria. Nigerian students are aggressive. They are smart. They honor God. They know how to fast. They know how to pray. And they become leaders that will change the world for the glory of God. One of the privileges I have as Oral Roberts University's president is periodically bestowing honor on those who serve the faith community with spiritual leadership, wisdom, perseverance, and distinction. Honorary doctorates are rarely conferred under my leadership as president at ORU. We take this honor very seriously at our university and any candidate 
for an honorary doctorate is voted on by ORU's faculty, our board of trustees, and the president's office. These recognitions carry the support of our entire institution and all of its over 60 year history. Tonight, I am here to present the Doctor of Divinity for distinguished service in spiritual leadership to Enoch Adajere Adaboye. This honorary doctorate of divinity was actually conferred during our May 2022 commencement exercise. Since Dr. Adaboye could not be with us in Tulsa for the ceremony, I decided to bring his degree to him here in Nigeria. I want to take just a moment, though, tonight and read you what was in the program for our graduation about Pastor Edaboye. E. E. Edaboye came from an humble family, never having owned shoes until he was 18 years of age. But his passion for books and an aptitude for science and mathematics led to an academic journey in which he earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the University of Nigeria, a master's degree in hydrodynamics, and a PhD in applied mathematics from the University of Lagos. Adeboye's career uh, goals originally were in academic administration. But after coming through Christ, through the divine healing of their daughter, Adeboye and his wife, Mama Adeboye, followed the call of God into ministry and leadership with the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the RCCJ. During his pastoral ministry, Adeboye conducted Bible studies, crusades, revivals, outreaches, and evangelistic programs in cities all over Southwest Nigeria. Upon being appointed general overseer of the RCCG, Holy Ghost services were started and are attended by millions each month. Over his career, Pastor Adeboye has written 60 books. Yes. I first met Overseer Adeboye at the 2006 Azusa Street Centennial Celebration where he preached for us on Africa Night. It was a powerful evening as people rushed the stage to receive a touch of the anointing flowing across Africa. I've also been honored to be with him at other conferences around the world with the Pentecostal World Fellowship and Empower 21. He has always been mild-mannered, gracious, and an exemplary Christian. His messages are insightful, simple, and profound, touching people deeply. Yes, give God praise. Yet it was at an all-night prayer rally in Baltimore several years ago when I witnessed Pastor Adeboye at his best. I was invited to speak during the prayer rally and was on program at 2 a.m. in the morning. When I got the invitation, I thought no one will be there at 2 a.m. What they didn't tell me is the featured preacher, uh, Daddy Adeboye, was going to be on at 4 a.m. So the place was packed. During his message, beginning at 4 a.m. in the morning, he paused while he was preaching and began writing on a piece of paper. He then began sharing the words God was giving him. And I witnessed some of the most profound and clear words of knowledge given that I have ever seen in my lifetime. Yes. From describing people's dreams in detail to, revi to revealing people's sins that had happened that very day, it was a bold and unusual moment. He was absolutely on target with everything he said. People began screaming out in repentance as they ran to the altar after hearing these accurate words of knowledge about their situation. It was amazing to observe as this godly man, in tune with God's voice, was used not only to minister to the, to the masses, but specifically touch individuals. Daddy G.O., as he is affectionately known, has become the spiritual father to the entire redeemed Christian Church of God movement. 
and his spiritual father to thousands of ministers around the world. During his 40-year tenure now, RCCG has become one of the fastest growing and most impactful denominations in the world. Amen. It is a distinct honor to be here with you tonight. So, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Oral Roberts University, it is my pleasure as ORU's fourth president to grant Dr. E.A. Adeboye the honorary degree of Doctor of Divinity for distinguished service in spiritual leadership with all rights, privileges, and immunities appertaining thereto here and elsewhere. Dr. Adeboye, we love and respect you highly at ORU, and we welcome you as an honorary alumnus of our university. Gentlemen, would you, yes, here it is, come. Bishop, we love you. We thank God for you. Here is your diploma. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, well, let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> I want to thank you very much for this honor. And I want you to know we have received it with all our hearts. And we are extremely grateful. Um, I think like I shared briefly when, when we were together, I made a little bit of research and I found that uh, the number of people with more than three honorary doctorate degrees in the world are very few. And I already got seven. So I felt that that's, that's more than enough. And so other offers I had politely declined. But when I heard that at a robot university, the greatest and the best Pentecostal university in the world was going to give me an offer, uh, I tried to dodge by saying, I'm sorry, I can't come. Then I learned that to say, you will come. <laughs> That's why I can't dodge anymore. Thank you very, very much. And please give our love to our robot university. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
I want you to I want to decree to you in the name that's above every other name you will all be greater than I If you receive that, let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, we, we want to move on to the last part of the session for tonight. Um, the pastors will line up as they did the other time. And then you will all come they will anoint you and once you receive the anointing tonight i want you to begin to cry to the almighty god no more causes in my life from now on it's going to be blessings all the way so the oil has been anointed they will come to you and please let's do it in an orderly fashion uh, those of you in the overflow there are people there already waiting to attend to you. In the meantime, we hand over to the choir as they minister to God during the anointing. Over to you. Obato fi mole shashobora Kabi esire olua Obato fi mole shashobora O fi mole shashobora O fi mole shashobora Onio Fimole Shashobora O Fimole Shashobora Kabi Esire Olua Obato Fimole Shashobora Kabi Esire Olua Obato Fimole Shashobora Hey, oh, female, shashabura. Oh, female, shashabura. Boni, oh, female. Oh, female, shashabura. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and yeah, no, honor, power and might, hey, be unto the forever and ever. Lift your hands and say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Blessings. Glory. 
Anybody who has not yet been anointed, please, you have to run forward now because we want to close. All right. Then let all of us lift our voices together in one to the Almighty God and say, Father, every curse that I've been operating in my life, I believe you. I will see them no more. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Every curse, whether from my father's house or from my mother's house or something, I cursed myself. Every curse that I've been operating in my life, my Father in heaven, I believe you that I shall shield them no more. That I shall shield them no more. I shall see them no more. Oh, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. I believe by the unction of the anointing, every curse that I've been operating in my life, one way or the other, I shall see them no more. I shall see them no more. 
I shall see them no more. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And this time around, you lift your hands to the Most High God and say, Father, I believe you. From now on, I am blessed. I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the afternoon. I'm blessed in the evening. I'm blessed in the night time. I'm blessed all the days of my life. And my children are blessed with me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I believe you, Daddy. I receive it and I declare it. Oh, yes, Lord, from now on I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the afternoon. I'm blessed in the evening. I'm blessed in the night time. I'm blessed all the days of my life. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. And my children and grandchildren, all my generations from now on, we are blessed. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I believe it. I receive it. I declare it. I am blessed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I stand in my position as a father to this, your children. And I pronounce on each and every one of you, from now on, you are blessed. Everything you touch shall prosper. The host of heaven will support you. The host on earth will support you. Even the host underneath the earth will obey you. You are blessed. No more curses for you. You will never fail again. No more barrenness for you. It shall be well with you. Whatever you touch from now on will prosper. The world will hear about you and they will bless God for your sake. So shall it be. So shall it be forever. And the blessings you have received, you will never lose. And the causes that have been destroyed now will never resurface. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed. Let me hear a blessed hallelujah. <laughs> 